Alright, we're moving on to Lesson 1.13, Transformations Part 1. This is one of my favorite lessons. Okay, I've been having a lot of students that aren't remembering what I've asked you to do. Uh, please put your course and section number on all communication with me, whether it's IM or KML. Okay, I've got to have this information to help you uh, faster, more efficiently. Okay, an example of your course number is 203A, 204A. Your section number will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Okay, so I need your course number and your section number. Okay, the objectives of our lesson in transformation is to identify a reflection, a translation, a rotation, or a dilation. Then we need to determine whether a transformation is isometric and then we need to perform transformations on ge geometric figures and I believe you will be doing this with a compass and straight edge and geodebra. We got a well they say they're new terms you may have learned these in uh, middle school or even earlier but when we're talking about the image that's our new image. It's the transformation, the figure that is the result of the transformation. So when we say image, we're talking about the new picture, okay? Well, we're going to talk a, a lot about is isom isometry, and that's a transformation that preserves the size and shape of the object's original image, okay? Whenever it goes through its transformation, its size stays exactly the same. When we're talking about the pre-image, that's the original figure before the transformation. And then there's a reflection. This is the same as seeing your reflection in the mirror. And a rotation is just turning of a figure. Um, now a transformation is what the lesson's all about. It's a one-to-one -one mapping between two sets of points. Okay. That's the official definition. Now a translation is the sliding of a figure in a straight path without rotation or reflection. And if any of this sounds confusing, hopefully after we see a few picture examples, it's going to make a lot more sense. But first we got to cover some uh, of the foundation to set it all up. Here's your different types of transformations. You've got a reflection. And when we think of a reflection, we think about flipping, okay? It's a transformation of a figure by flipping it across a line or a line segment, creating a mirror image of the figure. Another transformation is a translation. Those almost sound alike, but they're not. A transformation is the sliding of a figure in a straight fat path without rotation or reflection. And then a rotation is just the turning of a figure a certain number of degrees around a central point. And then last but not least is dilation. This results in an image that is smaller or larger than the pre-image. Let's talk for a minute about an isometric transformation. Remember I told you isometry means you're going to preserve the size and shape of the pre-image. Okay, so it doesn't change. So when you do a reflection, the size and shape doesn't change. When you do a translation, the size and shape does not change. And when you do a rotation, the size and shape does not change. However, when you do a dilation, remember in our last slide, results in an image that is smaller or larger than the pre-image. So that right there tells me that it's not going to be isometric. And that's why I put a big X on it. Okay, let's look at some examples. It says identify each transformation as a dilation, a reflection, a rotation, or a translation. So here's your pre-image right here. And it looks like it could be a translation because it's just sliding to a new location. But look at the image. The image is just a little larger than the pre-image. 
So that tells us it's going to be a dilation. Now also remember, it's not going to be isometric. If this little square or rectangle with the happy face had stayed the same exact size, then it would have been isometric. But since it changed size, there is a dilation, that means that it's not isometric. Okay, here we go. We got these little triangles with these little happy faces and they're coming over here. And look here, they look like they're the same exact size. They're in the same exact position. The only thing that changed was their location. So let's see if it's a translation. There we go. Okay, remember a translation is it's just sliding from one spot to another. Nothing changes. It's just sliding to a new spot. Alright, look here. We've got a letter L. Okay. And then when we come over here, oh, we got a letter L here. Doesn't look like it's changing uh, shape. Doesn't look like it's changing sizes. It just looks like it's a reflection, which, hello, that's exactly what the term is, a reflection. One more here. Okay, look at these little interesting guys. It looks like three L's, or three little rooftops, okay? Look what happens when they slide over here. It looks like they might be a little bigger, but let's pretend they're not. They're going to be exact the same size. I really think that if we were to measure, they would be the exact same size. We're just having to see a little optical illusion here. Okay, so it looks like it's not a translation because they changed... Uh, my brain just went blank. They changed. Okay, they're not in the same exact position as they were before they moved. They're staying the same size, so it's not a dilation. And it's not a reflection because they aren't looking in the mirror at each other. So, it looks like we're going to have to go with the rotation. And that's what happened. Okay, let's look at some more, because remember, those were just the different translation or transformations. Now we're going to look a little bit closer at uh, some of the transformations and what's isometric and what's not. This problem says that Charlotte is a photographer who has to perform many transformations on her photos. What is the name a geometer, that's us, would give each of the following transformations? A says Tim wants Charlotte to print an enlarged family portrait for his wall. Here's your key word right here, enlarged, okay? That means it's changing sizes. And remember, any time it changes sizes, it's going to be a dilation, okay? Let's look at B. Tim, oops, let me get my pointer. Tim wants a wallet-sized photo of his son, okay? It doesn't tell us what size the original photo was, but we know that if we're going to take the print to make a family portrait, it's probably going to be like 5 by 7, 8 by 10, or something like that. And we're changing it to wallet sized. So if we're changing it to wallet size, that means we're changing the size, so it looks like we're going to have another dilation. Now right here, it says that Kim asked Charlotte to frame a photo upside down. Okay, so instead of having it up, up right, she's going to put it upside down. So she's not asking her to change the size or the shape, So, but she's asking her to turn it 180 degrees. So remember, whenever you're rotating, you're turning it. So this is going to be a rotation. Okay, let's look at D. 
It says Charlotte has placed two photos on a page of an album, but changes her mind and moves them both to different places on the page. So remember, it's not reflecting, it's not rotating, it's just changing position. So when it's changing position, it's going to be a translation. Oh, looky there, I have all the answers right there, so don't look at them too close. Here's part E. Of the described transformations, which are isometric and why? Now remember, in order for it to be isometric, it cannot change size. Remember A and B are dilations. She want, Part A wanted it enlarged, Part B wanted it to be smaller. So those A and B are not isometric because they changed the size and shape or shape. C and D, remember, was a rotation and a translation. They're not changing sizes or shapes, they're just moving to different positions. So here's the formal answer. It says A and B are not isometric because the size of the image changed from the pre-image, and C and D are isometric because the image produced only moved locations, or as I was saying, changed positions. Okay, what we learned, a transformation is a mapping from one image to another. So you got your pre-image and your new image. Some transformations, called isometries, map congruent images to each other. A reflection, rotation, and translation are all isometric. And any transformation that does not preserve congruence is not isometric, which we have discovered in this lesson is a dilation. So what you should be doing, go view the lesson in the LMS. Complete the student guide as you go through that lesson. Read through pages 23 through 25 in the reference guide. Complete these problems in your problem set. They're super easy, it won't take you five minutes. One through 25 odd, and then number 29. And as you're doing those, you will realize, do you need to contact me or attend TOGA? so you can make sure you'll make a five on your quiz. And please make note of any general questions you may have for when you attend CC on Thursday. And that's the end of our lesson today, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.